Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new video card from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 660 Ti. It just launched. This is the Windforce 2X edition with the custom uh, GPU cooler and it's also overclocked and I'm also going to be closing off with some benchmarks. We'll start off with a closer look at the box again. Windforce uses triangle cooling which is triangle shaped uh, fin design for the actual uh, cooler on the GPU. Overclocked again, uh, the stock or reference uh, core and boost clocks for the 660 Ti is 915 and 980 megahertz respectively. Uh, the Gigabyte 660 Ti boosts that up to 1033 for the base clock and 1111 for the boost clock. Uh, and a lot of cards will actually boost clock even higher than that. I'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, you get 2048 megabytes of GDDR5, so that's your memory frame buffer. Uh, you get uh, 6.0 gigabits per second uh, memory data rate, that's effective. Uh, you also get a 192-bit memory bus, and that's one of the uh, most significant differences between the 660 Ti and the 670 is the memory uh, bus. You get three 64-bit controllers with the 660 Ti, 192. Uh, you get four 64-bit controllers with the 670. Apart from that, though, a lot of the specs are shared, including the GPU, which is the GK104 28 nanometer GPU. Uh, here's a little bit closer detail on the cooler that's in this, and I'm going to show that to you, of course, once I get the card out of the box. Triangle cool technology, which is patent pending, which directs the airflow down and outwards away from the GPU to enhance the cooling capabilities of the uh, aftermarket cooler that Gigabyte has designed for this card. It's the 2X, so it has two fans, but they are quite large. And again, I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, they're using an ultra durable. Uh, PCB for this video card, a two ounce copper PCB uh, right there. Tier one memory uh, promises first tier memory built with 100% fully testing. Japanese solid capacitors, ferrite core metal chokes, low RDS on MOSFETs, and uh, some pretty high quality components they're using in this video card. Let's take a look what's inside the box. Inside the box here we have Gigabyte's graphics cards quick guide which is sort of a generic guide that will show you how to install a video card and give you important information like how to tell the difference between the different types of video outs that might be there. Uh, you can also check out our how to build a computer video if you do need some assistance with installing a video card. Uh, they've also provided a couple power adapters. Uh, this is a 150 watt TDP video card. Uh, Gigabyte and NVIDIA are recommending at minimum a 450 watt power supply. And let me double check my notes real quick because uh, 450 watt power supply with a minimum single 12 volt rail with a uh, 25 amp current rating. So um, if you have an older power supply that doesn't have PCI Express connectors, you can use this, but make sure it at least meets those wattage requirements. And then this is a double Molex to six pin PCI Express on both of those. And that pretty much does it for accessories. So we're gonna move on to the video card. I'm gonna start off here with a quick measurement. So you guys can make sure this will fit into your computer case because that's always important. And uh, I am measuring just about 10 inches, uh, give or take a millimeter or two. So make sure you got at least 10 inches of space in your case for this video card. Uh, you'll notice here two large fans. They're 95 millimeter fans, and that is the primary cooling uh, for this video card. This is uh, in the Windforce family of, cool of aftermarket GPU coolers from Gigabytes. Uh, this is the 2X version, so two large fans. They range anywhere from two fans to three fans to even five fans on some of their super overclock models. But you'll notice here, if you look at it from this side, you have a large array of aluminum fins right there. The GPU is going to be right beneath that, so it's going to be pulling up heat. You also have copper heat pipes, two on each side, that are um, providing a little bit more heat dispersion out to the side. So two go right there into this array of fins over here, two more over here into this array of fins. This array of fins also right down there, makes contact, uh, or at least has a thermal pad underneath there, which is making contact with the MOSFET. So that's your power delivery for the GPU. It's going to help keep that a bit cooler. And uh, that's very important, for, especially for the 600 series, because uh, if you keep the card nice and cool, if you maintain airflow in your case, you'll get good GPU boost speeds, because uh, GPU boost is going to monitor the temperature of your card, and it won't be going up to the maximum uh, allowable by the GPU unless the card stays within the defined thermal parameters. That said, flipping the card over, we can see uh, Gigabyte has done a custom PCB for this one. It's blue. Uh, here on the back, we can see the other side of the GPU. The cooler is mounted with Phillips head screws right there. 
You can see a couple of the memory modules as well. Uh, again, that's the biggest difference here, uh, going from the 670 to the 660 Ti is going to be your memory bandwidth. And um, if you uh, really want to know what kind of a difference that makes, uh, typically if you want to turn on the really high-end eye candy in games such as MSAA and anisotropic filtering, um, you're going to need that memory bandwidth. So if you do want to go uh, max out all those settings, you probably want to jump up to the 670 or 680. But uh, as this card is coming in at a much more reasonable price point than those if for the average gamer, um, you know, sometimes you got to work with what you got. So uh, that being said, here's a look at the side of the card. Wait, I should say, yeah, this side of the card is the uh, side of the card that you will typically be seeing in most computer builds. So primarily you're going to be seeing the uh, heat sink and the fans and everything. It's a very open cooler. And I've noticed with my testing with the 660 Ti so far, open coolers have been d doing a really good job at cooling. This one, in fact, um, only got up to about, I think, 67 degrees Celsius was the max temperature I saw on any of my tests. Um, that said, the shroud coolers uh, will, will maintain the, uh, the ambient air in your case. It won't be dumping out quite as much warm air from the cooler, but sort of the trade-off. So depending on your cooling situation, you might opt for one or the other. Uh, around to this end, we can see our video connectors. And uh, bear in mind, you've got two uh, dual-link DVI connectors right there. The upper one here is digital only. The lower one here is digital plus analog. They can both do 2560 by 1600 resolution. Just uh, if you are using an older ma monitor and a DVI to VGA adapter, use it with that lower plug because that's the one that's got the analog connectors. You also have an HDMI port right there. You also have a uh, DisplayPort 1.2 connector. And uh, this is NVIDIA surround capable on a single video card, so you can power up to four monitors. You can actually connect all four of these and power displays from them. You can use three of those displays for 3D gaming, and the fourth can be a companion monitor, uh, which you can use to pull up websites or chat dialogues or anything like that to keep you interested while you're waiting for your raid to start. Down here at the bottom, you have your PCI Express uh, connector, and that is PCI Express Gen 3 compliance. So uh, Gen 3 gives you effectively double the bandwidth availability of Gen 2. It's also much more efficient. Don't worry though, it is backwards compatible with PCI Express Gen 2 or Gen 2.1. So if you have an older motherboard, you can still buy this card, you can still plug it in, and uh, it's really not going to even be that much of a performance difference from Gen 2 to Gen 3, because right now none of these cards can even saturate that bus. Uh, up here are your power connectors, as previously mentioned. So you got two 6-pin PCI Express connectors. Uh, those are 75 watts each for 150 watts total TDP of the card. You also have 75 watts available from the uh, PCI Express bus. So uh, TDP, by the way, um, cards do sometimes go beyond the listed wattage of that. But again, just make sure that you're meeting the requirements of uh, the power supply requirements that I mentioned earlier, and you should be good to go. Down here at this end, you have your SLI connectors. The Gigabytes put a couple of covers over those. So you got two of those. Um, you only need two if you're going to go for three-way SLI, which this video card is capable of handling. You can do uh, two-way or three-way SLI with the 660 Ti. Um, but yeah, there's your SLI connector. Uh, the GK104 GPU at the center of this, uh, really uh, fantastic GPU. Again, it's the same GPU used in the uh, 670 as well as the 680. Uh, only difference from the 680 is the 670 and 660 have uh, seven SMX units versus eight that you get in the 680, and that gives you 1,344 CUDA cores uh, if you're into GPU compute type stuff. Uh, CUDA cores are pretty handy to have lots and lots of. That said, we're going to move into some benchmarks next. Uh, I set this card up with a 3570K processor, Intel processor, Core i5, and a uh, Z77 chipset motherboard, which I'm, I'm guessing is going to be a very popular configuration for this card. Um, so I tested this card as well as a, a pretty high-end GTX 580, which is the single GPU flagship card from NVIDIA's 500 series. Um, really, the biggest difference is this card has some more uh, memory, of course, there are different GPU architectures as well. Uh, the 580 does have a 384-bit um, memory interface, so uh, that did give it an edge in some of the uh, tests that I ran that had higher anisotropic filling and filtering and anti-aliasing. But that said, here are your benchmarks.
there are your benchmarks, guys, and I'd like to point out that this particular video card got up to 1,215 megahertz on the GPU boost. It hit that consistently throughout every test that I ran. Uh, each GPU is going to be a little bit different, so bear in mind you're going to get at minimum the GPU, GPU boost speed that's listed by the manufacturer, but a lot of them can go beyond that. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, once again, this has been the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 660 Ti Windforce 2X OC Edition. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Also, if you're interested, I'm going to be doing a full review of the 660 Ti series, or at least a lot of the cards available, so you can check that out as well. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.